how's it going out there, guys? So today we're uh, you know keeping with our basic battle tactics. So we're going to talk about uh, a holding attack, executing a holding attack. So what a holding attack is, pretty simple definition, is basically an attack that we make for the express reason of pinning a portion or a particular part of an enemy's force in place for, uh, there's a multitude of reasons. So we can kind of go over some basic examples, and there's some different types. So the basic reason that we would do a holding attack would be so that we could then maneuver or envelop the enemy in some manner. So, for example, let's say I have forces that are relatively even, um, but I have some form of, you know, fast maneuver element. Maybe this is horse cavalry back in the day. Maybe now this is a force of, uh, you know, it's a spe special operations force or it's, it's a group of, you know, lightly armored vehicles that are very quick. So I attack my enemy for the purposes of getting them to engage with me. So if you remember back to our fix, I found them, I need to fix them so now I can flank them, I can maneuver on them. So the holding attack keeps the enemy engaged, keeps them fixed here, and then I envelop them with my maneuver element. So that's very, uh, you know, common, common thing that we would use that for, um, so it could be maneuvered against. Additionally, maybe I have forces that are strung out over here. They just got... Uh, they just crossed the river, they just landed on the beach, or they just hit the, the landing zone, um, you know, whatever it happens to be, I need to keep an enemy from maneuvering on them. So, I launch a holding attack against them. The holding attack in this instance does not have to be intended to destroy or to overwhelm or to drive back the enemy or anything like that. Basically, what it needs to do is it needs to fix the enemy, or what we might also call, it needs to make the enemy invest, or to decisively engage. And uh, the, the correct definition of decisively engage means that you cannot then disengage without having to do some form of, like, staged withdrawal or something like that. So while these, you know, maneuver elements might be, uh, you know, moving over to attack part of my force, I engage them, and I get them to become invested, so that way these forces fall back over here. Um, you know, or whatever it happens to be. So that would be very, um, you know, that'd be kind of, you know, common things that we do. Other reasons why we might do a hold attack would just be that we kept, um, let's say we catch an enemy on the march. They're going from point A to point B for some reason, all right? But I need to slow them down to allow forces to get in place, to allow a defense to be set up, whatever it happens to be. So I hit them with some form of holding attack. I get them to invest, or maybe I get them to invest a portion of their force. Okay, now I can buy us some time, things like that. Okay, so that's the very, you know, kind of simple concept of it. So now, there are a couple different types of standard holding attack, and, uh, and obviously they're going to be much more similar than they are different. So, uh, one type is a feint. So a feint is, you know, it's basically an attack that is a diversionary attack, i.e., so it's, it's meant to, you know, be a holding attack to get an enemy to either um, uh, you know, to invest forces against us or to prevent them from sending forces to reinforce somewhere else. But what makes a feint a feint is that it does involve contact with the enemy. So say, for example, you know, I have groups of forces over here and this is going to be a primary attack, right? So now we're going to go through various kinds of ways to sort of uh, disguise this, but I'm going to attack here with these elements, Right? And I'm going to get them to kind of attack in a feint. Right? So the enemy doesn't know that this isn't the real attack. It forces them to invest right? and to decisively engage some of their elements. And that allows the main attack to take place over here. So that's a feint. Um, that's a very common uh, standard way. We also have what's called a demonstration. So a demonstration does not involve... Um, actual contact with the enemy. So what a demonstration might be, and this maybe is more difficult to think of in, in modern um, terms, but let's say, let's go back to, you know, 19th century and we think of linear warfare. So what I might do is I might make a big showing. I'm going to get all my, I'm going to get all my battalions and my regiments, my brigades, like up on line. I'm going to get them in position. They're going to see me moving my cavalry, my cavalry getting over there. They're going to see people giving out orders, us moving artillery, things like that. They're going to see commanders, you know, of units out in front, telling the men to load, telling the men to fix bayonets. And they're going to see us marching and moving around and things like that. So the enemy's going to be very invested in this, you know, visually. So they're going to go, okay, hey, I see this going on and I see troops over here, you know, and we're kind of set up to sort of deal with this, but I can't. I can't totally discount that this isn't a real attack, so this is going to freeze me 
right? And it's gonna it's gonna hold some of my units in place so that we can then try to hit a uh, you know a, a, an overwhelming attack here. So a couple very good examples of this um, you know to kind of think of. So uh, so famously uh, Chancellorsville, um, you know, eighteen sixty three. Uh, you know, so the Confederate, uh, the Army of Northern Virginia versus the Federal Army of the Potomac. So famously, uh, Robert E. Lee, you know, moved, you know, broke his force into multiple different units. Uh, you know, in, in, you know, he split his corps up in front of an Army of the Potomac that massively outnumbered him, which goes against everything in the book. And it's like, <laughs> whether you like him or whether you hate him, whether you support their cause or not, doesn't really matter. Robert E. Lee had a set of brass nuts clanking around between his legs. Um, especially for this. So Robert E. Lee basically launches attacks kind of all throughout the day with no real intention of breaking through or doing anything other than forcing the Army of the Potomac to kind of respect him and to deal with him. Meanwhile, the federal line more or less, you know, kind of was up in the air and it hadn't even been refused on the far end over here. So you basically have Oliver O. Howard's core over here. So then you have Thomas Jackson, so Stonewall Jackson basically makes a midday 12-mile march with his entire corps to end up on the flank, and then they launch this crushing attack against the right flank of the, uh, of the Army of the Potomac. Now, as it kind of happens, it happened late enough in the day that they end up having to conduct some of this after dark. Jackson actually ends up getting shot by some of his own North Carolinians and, and dying, you know, later on of pneumonia from, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the, the recovery process of that. So that's a very good example of uh, what would be a holding attack, and in this case, a feint, uh, where he is physically in contact with them. Um, then for, you know, better examples of like, you know, a demonstration. So demonstration, you go back to, uh, you know, like the, uh, the the campaigns on the on the peninsula and things like that, where, you know, things that the Confederates did and Robert E. Lee did and, and stuff like that was they, they literally were just marching, you know, Confederates past the Union lines. And then they were basically, you know, getting them on uh, you know, if they could get them on wagons or trains or have them march around where they couldn't be seen, and they're basically putting back in the line and having them march past again and doing this over and over. So to the Federals, it appeared like there was a lot more Confederates around than there were, and they appeared like they were doing stuff, so they, they did not want to take a large chunk of their force away to try to go deal a crushing blow because they're like, hey, it looks like there's a lot of, you know, Confederates around here. So a, a very smart ploy, um, you know, in that matter. But again, so holding attack, uh, again, obviously designed to keep a portion of an enemy's force pinned in place, either so we can maneuver on it or to keep it from maneuvering on us in some manner. A couple main ways that we do it. So a feint, which is a basically a fake attack, but where we do physically make contact and engage the enemy. Or we have a demonstration where we demonstrate, where we basically get in front of an enemy and we make a big show of what we're going to do, but we don't actually initiate an attack. But remember guys, only the hits count and you can never miss fast enough to catch back up.